Hey, people, this is episode 214, and this episode did see three of us in tow. That would be The Bender and Bombcast J joining myself as we talked about. Uh, really, mainly, we, we had about three themes that, that took place in this episode, and one was clarity with John Bender. Two would have been WandaVision and everything about the first three episodes, and then as you listen to this, the only three episodes are out. Or, I'm sorry, as I record this, the only three episodes are out. By the time this is drops, it'll a fourth one will be out. So um, we talk about that. And then we talk, you know, this actually came up in the episode, and then it has swirled around our conversations the entire week, and that's Alan Tudyk because we just love the guy. And so that's really what this episode's about. Uh, of course, we talk about a few other things. And, we, you know, we give some shout-outs to friends, and I want to do that again right here and use the message board beginning uh, thing that I do to say, hey, you guys should check out. I believe he's releasing them on Saturdays. I don't know how long it takes him to edit them, but I know he records them on Friday nights. But uh, author Aaron Conaway, friend of the show, friend of me, uh, multiple-time guest on the show, he's got a new segment uh, or a new thing he's doing for YouTube called Drinks Around the Table to where he, you know, so far it's just been molar with him. He's only had one episode. Um, he's asked me to do it, and I'm going to do it at some point. But it's just them drinking or sitting around the, I mean, zooming around uh, a figurative drawing table, doing some things, talking about stuff and influences, drinking some bourbon or whatever you like to drink. And it's kind of fun. About 30 minutes an episode. So real worth checking, really worth checking out. So go do that. I'm stammering through this. So I'm going to just go ahead and play the bomb or make the bomb sound and start the episode here pretty quick. Actually, right about now. Your clarity is often the problem. Yeah, yeah I know. That's, that's got, what I was saying. That's got nothing to do with the voice. Of the <laughs> As the drinking goes on, yeah, more, yeah. more to that's do. It's usually hazy. More to do with pronunciation and just thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Are we going to jump right in? Jump right in, just like yeah. the urge. Yep. Hey, we are back, and it has been a while, but we have a full-ish house. Still no, still no badger. We don't no. know where he is, uh, and no flop. She. Even though she is a, uh, she has been watching our main topic of conversation this week. Uh, she didn't. She figured it would lead to a lot of nerdy, yeah, now, yeah, which yeah. is going to probably. So will. she's like, I don't need to be. She goes, I like the show. I don't need to know all the ins and outs of it. I just need to enjoy the show. So, yeah. so there's so no flop. But but that said, the one or two voices you've heard, uh, Caddy Wampus to my left would be Bender. Yep. No gimmicks needed. And then uh, the newly crowned Caddy Wampus to my right, Bombcast J. Yeah. Dang. I mean, you both have a gray beard, so I guess that works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't understand what the gray beards have to do about Tom and him. Oh, him replacing Tom. Caddy okay. Wampus to the right before. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't connect the dots there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clarity, Bender. Clarity. <laughs> um, I feel like that was on you. What, uh, yeah, what, uh, since, since it's been a while, uh, well, we didn't do last week uh, because of technical difficulties. And then, um, was it the week before? Or no, last week we did. It was the week before we didn't do. And then I had a uh, the tried to do one before that and a dental problem, which I do go to the dentist tomorrow. So I'm glad we're doing this tonight because I would not want to do it tomorrow. Uh, you haven't gotten all your teeth fixed yet? Uh, it's a process. I'm getting implants, mm. but because of the slight uh, genetically inheriting of my mom's degenerative bone disease, yep. they got to get really far up in to clean. Yeah. And it takes, for me, it was 12 shots throughout, and because of my metabolism, because of my broken jaws previously, and because of my size, once they finished the bottom row, they had to give me 12 more shots because I started feeling everything on the top row. Yeah. I feel everything. That's why I, like, just knock me out. Um, yeah. You can't. When I got my root canals, the guy goes, are you still feeling this? He gave me, like, 26 shots. He goes, I can't legally give you another shot. Yeah. I'm like, I said, I just, I'll bite down, Doc. We're getting through it. Uh, yeah. But so I got to go back tomorrow to get the left side done, and then after all that, it'll be time for implants and stuff oh, to get fun. going. So, so that's where I'm at. But not that dentistry has anything to do with it. What, what's been going on for the last couple of weeks with you, men? I'll start with you, Bender. Uh, turned 37 on Saturday. Happy birthday, Bender! Uh, I tried to drink at uh, Shamrocks for you. Thanks, man. I usually go out and you know cut a rug and you know have way too much fun. 
I but, love uh, we COVID all, times. We didn't. We all know that our original home away from home was Shamrock. Yep. But speaking of COVID, uh, we went there on a Saturday because or Friday night because Hayden had a nine thirty soccer game Friday night. Oof. So we went and had you know she had some pretzels because that's good carbs for loading up mm-hmm. for a game. Oh, yeah. um, we are no, it was Saturday. It was Saturday night. We um, whatever it was, who gives a fuck? Um, it there was a 60th birthday celebration in the back half of Shamrocks, and not all of our listeners know what that looks like, but certainly some of them do. Mm-hmm. You know what that looks like. Um, hundred people. Yeah. In the back, and and then the front was its normal busy, but was being confined to the front half. Uh, and I didn't get to talk to Kyle because they were so slammed uh, that. They were, you know, he was cooking. Yeah. But I did ask our server. I go, I go. Hey, look, I love, I love you guys. So, but is this worrisome? Yeah. She goes, yeah. That's double the amount of people that they said were coming. <laughs> like, oh, I was wow. like, ah, oh, that'll do. It. And then at that point, you're locked, kind of locked in. And, yeah. I mean, and is there capacity levels in St. Charles County still? I don't even. know. I, I don't know. I know that on the riverfront, they're cracking down on a lot of those bars there on how many people are on coming. St. Charles. In. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And then they shut down two bars in St. Louis City for a year. Well, yes, yeah, startup yeah, bar, start was bar on. and uh, the wheelhouse. Yeah. But that was uh, apparently there's some video and stuff of that. They were. Oh, there is. There was like a thousand yeah. people there, and they were having COVID chants and yeah, just. Sometimes don't be stupid. They, they were having large concerts in here. Don't. Here's what you don't do. Yeah. Don't act like you're an 18 year old freshman in college. Yeah. If yeah. you're a grown up, you know, and, and that's people's problem. But, you know, but. Can't it, tell me what to well, do. And so spinning it back to Kyle, uh, I, I can't fault the guy for needing the commerce. I mean, yeah. it's certainly been a rough go for every restaurant owner, but he's been like at the forefront of trying to champion stay on. Follow the rules. Yeah, it was in the lawsuit. Let us stay open, but everybody do it right, and then you know people, patrons abuse it. Yeah. And it's a problem. Uh, yeah, it's it's being a restaurant owner in these times is uh, not an envy that I have. No, and I. Bad form. And by the way, I tagged you in my check in to my beer that night. Had Did you? I, it was my was happy drunk. birthday to Bender. Nice. Yeah, I got pretty drunk. I had a good time. Uh, our old neighbors did come up. They hung from out from Kentucky, right? Yeah, yeah. from Kentucky. Uh, he brought me some Maker's Mark cask mate, bottom of the barrel. Oh, that's good. It's very good. Yeah. Like, there's, like, no burn to it at all. Yeah, and... uh, Maker's Mark's got some good. Maker's Mark 46 is really solid. Yeah. Uh, the, the barrel, the age, the cask is awesome. Yeah, it was very tasty. So, uh, that was fun. You, wish, you should try that Four Roses. That's a very, that's a more expensive I always bottle see it, of Four and Roses. I never, uh, I never put that it on. $70, $75 range, <laughs> so it's worth it. That's always my problem is I'm like, I don't know if 30 Five to fifty. I don't know what I'm getting the difference wise. You know, that's uh, that was a birthday. I, I get that one all the time. But that's the double oak. That's the oh, sixty five dollar okay. one. So nice. that was birthday present, and this one was a present. And then I got lucky. Uh, a lot of soccer slash softball parents, a handful of them got to get. They just bought me some boots, yeah. uh, including that box of chocolates that's sitting around here somewhere that has nothing the but chocolate booze, booze in, them. in them. Yeah, and it's it's a little much. The booze in it's a little much. Yeah, I either want a shot or I want the chocolate. I don't need them both. <laughs> I was one of the slacker parents that didn't do anything. Thing, but I brought beer tonight. So yeah, there you go, there you so go. yeah. Cheers! Thanks for the late happy birthday yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and late happy birthday to Bender. Although thanks. I did text you, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean it was uh, it was fun. That's about it. I've been uh, watched a couple TV shows, but I you know just been busy with kids and trying to. And I know we're going to get into TV shows a little everyone. bit. So what about you, Jay? What have you been up to? Um, dry January stopped over the weekend. Yeah, I dislocated my thumb again. He came, there you go. He came over for the last episode he was on, and yeah. I said, "You want a beer?" And he's like, "No, I'm doing a dry January." So I'm like, "Well, fuck it. If it's just me, I'm going to drink bourbon." Yeah. And then he came over. He sent that text tonight, and I didn't think anything. He walked in, and I thought for a second I was grabbing pint glasses. I go, "Wait a minute, what happened to dry January?" I thumb don't, injury, man. I think it's like it's a nice thing to reset the body, but 31 days is a long time. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. I got yeah. to the point where I was buying NA beer. Oh, nice. Oh, so here's the thing. And you know, you guys are good friends. We're all pretty normally high functioning people. But I think that's the technic- the clinical term of alcohol- alcoholism. Yeah. We're alcoholics. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, mean, I had um, 350 check-ins last year. Yeah, yeah. I've accepted it. Um, I try to only black out like 
maybe once a year now. <laughs> That's yeah. my goal. Oh, it used to be once a week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, there was times when Bender was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've literally partied with him for four or five hours that he's been blacked out. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I'll just keep going. Yeah, he's, his, his <laughs> and autopilot, I don't throw up. His autopilot is better than a Tesla. Yeah, nice. <laughs> he can go. As long as it's beer, I won't throw up either. I just fucking keep on going. Uh, so, so the thumb is better right now, though. Yeah, or? I had it in a splint for a few days. Hopefully, the ligaments have tightened up, so it won't pop back on again. And you, uh, but dry January's done. It's done. And, and other than that, it's been the normal same shit as us: watching Pretty TV, much. working from home, whatever. Yep. Yeah. I told him I'm playing hurt today, but I'm tough. I'm a hockey player. I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Uh, the way I'm playing hurt is I. <laughs> it's two straight days of having to travel for work, mm-hmm. which I'm not used to anymore. But what I what I told him where the problem came is that I had a big steak dinner with a customer last night, and today I had a big Cyberg's lunch. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you what, two big meals back to back from restaurants make me feel like ass. Yeah. And then I also had some problems where I couldn't sleep last night, so I woke up at like two and didn't go back to sleep till four. So I took me like a little twenty minute nap at four thirty to try to just make sure I was game ready for there this you go. episode. I uh, the other thing I I I finally got through it. I have a stupid sleep apnea machine now, oh. so I've been trying to fucking get used to that thing. How does and that? Yeah, that's got to be tough. Once you're asleep, it's better. But yeah, figuring out how to get yourself asleep. It's a long road between yeah. being awake and getting to sleep. So, like, it's this stupid fucking <laughs> mask that goes over your face. And my wife, I thought, I was like, how, is, how can you sleep next to me? This? And she goes, honestly, you don't snore anymore, so it's the greatest fucking yeah. sleep I <laughs> ever get. That's like me saying my dental story a while ago. Like, once I get the shot set in, it feels fine. Yeah. That's a lot of pain to get to that yeah. point. So, like, the first couple days I, did, I used it, I had to fall asleep first, and then I would wake up. And then I can put it on and like fall right back to sleep. But oh, okay. Now I can sort of fall. I still don't really like it, but it makes my wife happy, so I'll. You, keep doing it. It's weird. You're trying to. You're not much younger, but a little younger than me. Yeah. You just turned thirty-seven. You said. Yeah. And so you're six years ago, almost seven years younger than me. But you're trying to pass me. Yeah. With the old sleep apnea machine. Well, I went to the doctor and he's like, "You're not an obese guy," and it's usually obese people. Yeah. And he like, I guess like my. The roof of my mouth hangs lower. You've or always had a tight throat. In my yeah, head. yeah, yeah. It's really tough, man. Prison, I've always found prison will loosen that up for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had a coworker I had a procedure on his esophagus a couple of weeks ago. He goes, "I got to go in. I got to get a procedure on my esophagus." He goes, "It's apparently there's some scar tissue." I go, "Fuck yeah, there is." <laughs> <laughs> he, it took him a second. He goes, "I get it. That's a good." Uh, well, yeah, so that's a good time. I'll tell you this: the only thing I've got of note, other than the normal shit, before we jump in the episode, it, something that happened earlier was funny. We were upstairs, and Kaylin has. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe we've turned a corner uh, in her teenage years. She's now getting fun to be in a room with again. And we were just, she, she's been sitting in the room for like an hour or two at a time having dinner with me and Missy again. And every once in a while, she's pretty funny. And she goes, we were talking about something. I don't remember what it was. And she brought up the fact that she knows a drug dealer. And I said, wait a minute, you know, a drug dealer. She goes, yeah, one of the guys at school is a drug dealer. And I go, what kind of drugs? And she goes, the devil's leaf. And I go, <laughs> and Missy goes, and I go, it's lettuce. I go, Kayla, you mean the devil's lettuce? And Missy goes, well, at least we know our daughter doesn't smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you are uptight. Yeah, at least you know she's way too nerdy to smoke it. <laughs> yeah, which was a good, it's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, other than that, though, that that's about where I am. But, um, you know, we have, we spent the better part of 2020, and even, I can't remember, did Mandalorian debut in 2019? Yeah. Yeah. So 19 and then 20, uh, professing our undying love for Disney Plus's original content from Marvel, Star Wars. And now we have our first taste of the original content from Marvel. It, it, you know, and so we're in week three of WandaVision. Um, so it's really the first kind of arc at the yeah. end of the first arc. Uh, so I, what I did is broke down every Easter egg that I could find that I, some of them I caught, some I didn't. Okay. And then um, also just to go over our thoughts. So, that's what we're going to jump right into is one division, um, which could be a long topic because there's a lot of clues. Yeah. Um, so first off, just general thoughts so far after the three episodes before we jump in, and I'll start with you this time, Jay. All right, I'm I'm liking it. I'm. Do you I think it's a slow burn? Yes, it is. Very much so because I don't feel like much has happened in the three episodes, but like I'm deeply invested. The last ten minutes of episode yeah. three was yeah. like. Hitting you right in the face with what's going on. Yeah. So it makes me wonder, though, like, people that didn't grow up with the old sitcoms, like, what they're thinking 
because like well, I've you, seen those Easter eggs of like. Well, you have Dyke. kids. Yeah. Yeah. What do they think? Do they watch it with you? Yeah. Yeah, that's a. See, my a son thing. has like no interest in it. Jeremiah has no it's interest. It's the in it. most different thing they've done. But yeah, we're gonna yeah. get to that here in a minute too yeah. on some of the clues. But he just asked me, he's like, "Is it worth watching?" I'm like, I don't know if you get the context of the TV show. See, they don't get that for sure, but because it's Marvel, they're sitting through it waiting for. So the yeah. stuff first three episodes were screened by the critics. Everything past this, and the critics have been raving about it. And I'll tell you this. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to tell you whether it's great or not. We're going to save that till when we're done. And mm-hmm. after we get through, we'll give us our first three episode mm-hmm. rating. Um, uh, Elizabeth, uh, what, what's her Olsen. name? Olsen. Olsen. Yeah. Oh, didn't she have like a couple names? Is it just a li- No, she's just one, two yeah, names. She's, yeah. yeah, the other. She's her, just yeah. a normal Olsen. Uh, she, give her the Emmy. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. she is, it's her. And, and by all means, uh, uh, Vision, uh, Paul, Paul Bettany, Bettany is great. Um, the comedian chick that's in everything in the world, she's great. Yeah. But Elizabeth Olsen is just knocking it out of the park. Yeah, she's really selling, like, at least in the, like, especially the first two episodes, the campiness of, like, she the She fits the, 50, the time frame. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. And, but to go from, and we'll get to it in a second, but to go from the campiness to the seriousness, she turns on it. Yeah. I tell you yeah. what she does. She does the equivalent of what made Scrub so great is going from hack comedy to very serious moments, and and if you listen to their podcast, uh, Fake Doctors, Real Friends, yeah. mm-hmm. they say that was the hardest thing on their show as an actor is that they would literally be in a scene where they were calling each other brown bear and doing eagles to explaining to a patient they were going to die in the very same take, yeah. mm-hmm. and like that's and she does it. There's the, the beekeeper, which we'll get to. Yeah, that was very ominous. Yeah, the, yeah. the uh, mentioning of. Of of Quicksilver, yeah. yeah, she really turned on a dime there. And I would say, like Paul Bettany, like he's really playing up like the the campy. Oh, he's Darren. Yeah, uh, he's yeah, Darren from yeah. Bewitched. He's yeah. But I mean, like up until it, I'm sure we'll go into it. But like up until he starts to figure out something's not exactly right here, like he is full fledged in love with what this the, his character, whatever he's doing, like in this role, and um. Then as he slowly starts to figure thing, as he's figuring things out, he's pulling back a little bit and tightening up. Yeah. But like, he really pl- played into the, like the goofiness and like the the very first episode with the boss was just fucking spectacular. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, it's a slow burn and a pretty big gamble, I would say. Yeah, and what's really pulling me in is like looking for these Easter eggs, trying to yeah. figure out what's going on. Is uh. I don't. Is it picked up for more than one season, or is it supposed to be a one and done? I think, I think these are one, one and done, dones, right? Yeah. yeah, I think they're they're called limited series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's got probably a lot to do with the star power that's oh, yeah. involved in them. Yeah, uh, you're not going to get a lot. Of, but I tell you this, there was a very very fun uh, Paul De- Bettany story when this right before it debuted, is he thought he was fired. Yeah, and he yeah. said he said that you know he had a great run, seven films, but counting his voice. Uh, he's like, I, you know, when my contract was up, I got called to Disney offices and I was like, well, here it is. They're going to thank me and they're going to say, you, you've been great. Mm-hmm. And I, he goes, I started the conversation said, I just want you to guys know I've enjoyed this run. And they were like, are you quitting? He goes, oh, what do you mean quitting? They're like, well, we're, we got a TV show to pitch it. And he's like, and he loved it. So I got a feeling that even though Disney has its fair share of issues overall, mm-hmm. and, and I won't even get into your your favorite girl, Kathleen Kennedy, but yeah. but Kevin Feige, it's whatever Kevin Feige and his everything under his watch, yeah. is fucking great, yeah. And I think people enjoy being a part of it. That's why Chris Evans is coming back. Yeah. That's why, yeah. That's why um, even Robert Downey Jr. wouldn't completely close the door. And it's crazy, that, like on the Marvel, the the Marvel side of things, like everybody's loving it, and there's. And you're getting paid. And you're getting paid. But then on the other side, there are other big, big box office hit, like our should be hits, the Star Wars side. Everybody's kind of complaining. And it just goes to show you that when you have a plan and you stick to the plan and you execute well, everyone around you is happy. But when it's constant chaos and you don't really know where the story's going, people are going to feel shit on. Yeah. But see, early on, Marvel had those issues too. With yeah, the absolutely. Being unhappy and yeah, not yeah, yeah. The There's control they some, want. But well, like the Andy, Edgar were, Wright, there was a lot yeah. of control that Disney wanted. And then, and even Joss Whedon bailed. Uh, did not enjoy his Age of Ultron because right. they didn't let him do what he wanted, and that's going to happen. But I tell you this: there was also s- apparently some turmoil in the fact that Josh Whedon was kind of uh, going how, through some how about his personal brother, issues. Josh? 
Josh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going through some personal issues and stuff. I think that was a little after that. But um, he, uh, speaking of Paul Bettany stories, he released a story that said that he thought he was done acting altogether when Joss came to him and said, do you want this role as Vision? Like, his agent told him he was done. He couldn't find him anything. Huh. And then Joss I, called him personally. I apparently. tell you this. I can't remember the... Oh, uh, Uncle Frank on, uh, I think it's on Apple Plus, a show. Uh, or Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Uh, Which one's that one? It's a movie that came out about four months ago. And okay. it's Paul Bettany, and he plays a college professor. It, it's set in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this girl from the small town you know, down south goes to uh, college and see her uncle, who's the professor at this college, who's Paul Bettany. Oh, he's, he's gay. a gay dude, right? He's gay. Yeah. I'll tell you this. If that guy stopped acting, we'd have been deprived of some great roles. He's yeah. great as Vision. He's great in that movie. And I'll tell you, one of the biggest things I think is, uh, to his credit, he is flat fucking out of shape as Uncle Frank. And it's kind of gross. And, like, you know, he's 70s skinny with a pot belly. And then he goes back. And that's got to be filmed close to around the Vision. Yeah, you'd think so. And he gets back in shape for Vision, you know. <laughs> What was his character name in Solo? Because I thought he was very good as a bad Dryden guy in Solo. Voss. Dryden Voss. Yeah, I knew yeah. it was Voss. I couldn't remember the first he one. He wasn't even the original actor for that. No. Who was? It was supposed to be uh, Omar from The Wire. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, I call him Chalky White. Yeah. yeah. Also. Uh, Kept the scars on his face. Yeah. Uh, great actor. Yeah. yeah. Also. Very uh, good you actor. know, it's weird, too, when you watch, like, you watch some old movies from the 90s, early 90s, and he pops up in it, and yeah. you're like, I didn't know that was him at the time. Yeah. You know, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, um, they did that with Brie Larson. They uh, she was trending on Twitter the other day, and uh, she was in an old Community episode. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, no shit, I forgot she, she was, was a in there for a while. For, uh, yeah, um, I bet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was good. I, 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 I that, that happened to me too. I was just watching. Um, there was a movie I was just watching on Missy was watching on TV a couple days ago, or, or I was, and I turned it on. I didn't know it was Jennifer Lawrence was in the movie. I was like, God damn, Jennifer Lawrence has been around a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, anyway, I tell you this. Let's jump into the Easter eggs. Let's mm -hmm. break down the Easter eggs. And they're kind of in chronological order with the exception of a couple spots. Uh, Bender's going to get a beer. Bender, will you grab me a beer? Yep. I don't need the low-calorie one. I'll just take whatever. I did the mosaic already. It's pretty solid. And I'll take uh, whatever you got. I don't want that. Yep. You don't want the mosaic? No. Yeah, I've already had it. I'll take that. Looks good. Uh, Jay brought over, uh, I guess this episode, for the most part, sponsored by Sweetwater, but Bender also brought over some urban chestnut. I'm sorry, Civil, Civil Life. Life. Civil Life. And uh, you brought in the dog. The, yeah, the underdog. Uh, urban underdog, yeah. Um, but anyway, it's okay. here, let's get to the episode's Easter egg stuff. First off, episode one, one of the most noticeable ones was Stark Industry Toasters. Yes. Yep. Um, and what I like about this show so far is there's themes with each each like the if it pops up more than once, it's a big part of it. Yeah, I start. It's not just because start came up once. Uh, the next one, uh, you know, the original credit or not, the fake credits. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, if you look close, the notebook that the person shuts has a sword logo on it. Yeah, that they're watching the TV. Um, for those that don't know, sword is the space version of shield. I don't mm -hmm. know how they're going to make it work since they're on the ground or something. Yeah, I didn't know that. Idea. I was wondering that, too. I don't know if it's a scroll thing, maybe. Well, I think it's sword. I just think they're giving yeah. us another level to something. But I I'm, think we're going to find out that that's what Nick Fury and Talos have been working on. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, after uh, uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, and, and it's important, too, again, I'm, I'm going kind of out of order. Monica Rim Rimbaud mm -hmm. is the black woman in it. She yeah. is a... Geraldine. We, yeah, and we know that that's her character because they... To Cassiter is that mm -hmm. who is an agent of sword, a pretty famous agent of sword. So, uh, no, episode two had a pretty fun th or thing in the fake credits. Uh, Abe Brown was a director. Yeah, Abe Brown is a part of the uh, Sons of the Tiger from Shang Chi. Oh, okay. So, just so they're throwing some of the names yeah, are throwing yeah, yeah. out there. Um, Which he might pop up in that movie. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, in the grocery store, uh, Bova Milk. And it was yeah. in the wall in the background. Mm -hmm. Bova is the sentient cow that delivered Wanda's children in the comic book. Yep. Uh, the toy helicopter, which obviously is is one part, I think, nod to, to uh, uh, Pleasantville, and mm -hmm. one part, obviously, Iron Man colors, yeah. also had a sword logo on it. Uh, yep. They're driving home the sword, which doesn't really see a payoff till three. Um, and then the first big thing about who might be the bad guy, struck or watch. Yeah. Um. And then here, I think the biggest clue to date, though, is the beekeeper. 
So the beekeeper did have a sword logo on him, mm-hmm. but he also had a swarm of bees around him, and the beekeeper outfit in, in general looks like AIM, which is what Baron Strucker created AIM. Um, yeah. It would be awesome if they were bringing AIM as a new level of bad guys in this, and yeah. just not Hydra or just not, you know... Which is, for those that don't know, AIM is Advanced Idea Mechanics. Uh, they're evil scientists. Yeah, they're evil yeah. scientists. Um, and again, it should be founded by Strucker. The, this one I missed. I found it on the internet. Wentworths. So, obviously, you could say, well, that's, uh, that's a play on Woolworths. They couldn't use yeah. Woolworths. Yeah. But Deidre Wentworth was the first minister of education in AIM and Strucker's right-hand woman for a little while. Mm. So, it, it could be either or. Yeah. It could work. And maybe they accidentally made it work. Um, this is another good one that I think could be a hard one if you didn't do your research. Their house number is 2800. Yeah. Which is the main Marvel Universe, like 616. It mm-hmm. is, it's where all the things. Also, on the watch, uh, Strucker watches, the numbers were pointed to 2 and 8. Mm. So I think, I, I, again, it can't be a coincidence. No, they almost stuff's never going are. On. Um, the, the, the Sims are paint. That's not a big one in terms of overall. Story. It's just the guy who's been doing storyboarding for a lot of the Marvel movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. So they gave him a little props. I thought that was cool. Um, I think this one is a good one. Just the fact that it sets up, you know, um, Vision quotes Shakespeare's "All the World's a Stage" from uh, from Twelfth Night, which mm-hmm. is an allusion to everything's fake. And then they immediately follow that by playing the song "Daydream Believer." Yeah. When they kick Monica mm-hmm. out, when she gets kicked out of the compound. Um, which lets us know that it is officially fake. Yeah, and it's all going on. I don't. But what we don't know yet is is it going on? Is, are they just containing it? Which is what I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? A, is it a world that she built a bubble uh, for herself? Yeah. And they're trying to break in and pull her out. They're either or are tra- they containing her in this fake illusion to keep her under control. I, I kind of hope that they're having a hard, like they don't want it to engulf the planet, so they're trying to keep it in check. See, I think almost the other way around. Like I I think it'd be cool if they needed her power and they need to get it. Well, they of course want to, you know, yeah. there's a Well, I know, but I mean like if there's some other thing happening galactically or in you know, inter, interstellar that they need to pull her good. out to wake her up. So the other two things I've heard is it's possibly Hydra or AIM. And we've seen Hydra soap. Right. Or Hydra soak. Yeah. So they have her in swords trying to get her out. Okay. Yeah, and that'd then, be cool. Yeah. There's a theory that Mephisto is the main bad guy because yeah. he's got ties with her. And they brought up the fact in episode two, she says the the devil's in the details. Yeah. That could be, boy, Mephisto would be a good one. Yeah. Um, and that could tie into um, her Thor, and visions. Yeah. Uh, a Doctor lot of Strange. Doctor well, Strange. Mephisto is. The actual soul, her two kids in the comic is his soul. Yeah, he right. helped. Yeah, he yeah. helped. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, but it, you know, overall. And there's twins now, so that actually plays into that too. If you look in the episode three with it, you know, when she's having the twins. Yeah, yeah. which was a surprise. Yeah. Uh, what was, and you know, there's a lot of cool things like, again, when we talk about the dark takes, like when the doctor was going on vacation and he's like, you know, no, because no one really escapes these small towns. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of, you know, so, we talked about it being a slow burn, and it first two were, but they're very well acted. They're fun, campy. Episode three, now in color, mm-hmm. really ramps it up and lets you know something's going on. The other spooky part of episode three was the neighbor cutting through the wall. Yeah. yeah. And then, the, you know, it, it was very creepy. It was creepy. Yeah, like the illusions, illusion is like bleeding through or something. Something, yeah. yeah. And and so here's my question. Do you got some other notes on it? Well, I had down, um, I think it was episode two, the radio. It said, Wanda, can you hear me? Can you hear me? They're trying yeah. to talk to her, it seems. That was Jimmy Woo from... Uh, yeah. Ant Man. Yep. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. The, mm-hmm. the FBI agent that was yeah. checking on him. Yeah, yeah. He's a. They said he's going to be part of Sword as well. Man, I tell you what. If you're a, a you know, not to demean him, but a quote unquote bit player in these shows or movies, you never know. You got it made. Yeah. You never know. You never yeah. know when you're going to pop back up. I mean, you think that uh, Coulson? He yeah, thought exactly. he was going to yeah. die. He thought, I got a couple appearances and a couple films. I'm dead. And then they made a whole TV series about him. And now in the comic book, he's a bad guy. Yeah. Which I hope they don't happen in the, in the movies. So. Yeah. And they could always retcon it in the, in the comic books and stuff. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about the spookiness of it. Um, 
I can't go go ahead if you've got anything else. Um, I don't think so. I think most uh, most of what I was looking at was the the possible ways they could go with it where Wanda's in control of it all, kinda like disassemble yeah. or mm-hmm. yeah. Then oh, disassembled. Yeah, that's what yeah, no more mutants and things right. like yeah. that. But or more mutants. Yeah. Maybe she could do that by the end. Yeah, I think she might actually introduce well, the mutants. So here's the thing too, and this is also what I'm gonna think too is gonna happen. And it's going to let you. They're they're fine. They're they're, you know, one of the complaints I've had, small complaints I've had in all these Marvel movies is that every movie, every new character, like with Captain Marvel, who's who's awesome, mm-hmm. but they ramp up their power level because it's yeah. almost like you got to outdo yourself. Yeah, which got to be a little bit it bigger doesn't make and stronger. You don't have to do that. Like if you make the, when you make Moon Knight, you don't have to make him super powerful. He's He's a ground level character, you know. They should bring him. They should bring it down with Shang Chi because he doesn't have actual any power. He's just a stud. Yeah. Um, yeah. But one thing I do like about this, though, is because we know the history of the character in the comics. Wanda is powerful. Yeah. yeah. Wanda's super powerful. In fact, Wanda may have been able to take on Thanos had she known what she was capable of. Mm-hmm. And I hope that this happens. This I think this will be a cool scene. Is when they finally pull Wanda out. Vision doesn't want to come out because I don't think this is a. I mean, I think this could be a spoiler. He's dead. Yeah, he's yeah. dead. She's created him, which is why she can also control his responses that she yeah. did in the show. But he's going to not want her to go and reach out and grab her hand, and it's going to pull him out too. And she's going to essentially create Vision. Yeah, yeah. which is going to be awesome. Yeah, that'll be cool. Now, will she create him with the Soul Stone? Because he's got the Soul Stone in his head. In there, yeah. and he could be like I'm reading that Tom King comic now, and I'm not all the way through it. I'm on like oh, it's issue good seven. comic, man. I'm on like issue seven, but like they go back in the seventh issue and with uh, Scarlet Witch, and they're talking about stuff and how he died and was brought back, but he's not the same Vision. Like he's got the memories, but not the same feelings so that, and all of that type of thing. That's happened so. to him a couple times in the comic. In in uh, Busick's old uh, run on yeah. Uh, yeah. Avengers, he was not the same. He had a blank. He's an android, a blank but slate, they yeah. made they made a, the point to say he's never had a blank android stare. Yeah. He's always been like a human. So they've yeah. done that a couple times. Uh, one of the other things, another not important mem- uh, note: the tie that he wears is a nod to Tom King's uh, run, yeah, and, and it with the dots on it mm-hmm. and stuff. And so that's pretty fun. My, yeah. Did any of you see anything? The only other color they've shown is like every once in a while in the first two episodes when they were bleeding color. It was always it was either red or yellow, but it was when well, he she cuts that girl right before the radio goes like when that the explosion. Blood, it was yeah. the blood was red. I didn't. No, I haven't seen anything like to give any like credence to that. I think I think in my opinion, it's when when reality is bleeding in, it's mm-hmm. starting to get in color. Okay. And that I, in my opinion, the shock of seeing someone in her own world. Okay cut themselves like shouldn't happen in her world yeah plus that woman's creepy too she's yeah. the 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 head karen of the group mm-hmm. so that's just creepy too um so yeah like the helicopter falling in that's probably sword watching over things and that like just break, happened yeah. to fall through yeah yeah trying to get in uh so, show-esque type yeah. thing so we are three episodes in i'll start with you bender give your rating to date to date uh I gotta give it like an eight out of ten. Are we, we doing the six? Dude, or you, I'm we thinking, do the uh, same yeah. untapped Sorry. universal. I gotta show. give it a five. How long it has five. it been? Uh, Four playing, years since you've been on the episode. It feels like it. <laughs> uh, I gotta give it a five because I'm so intrigued at this point. Like yeah. in the slow burn, and like you gotta respect the fact that they're not like they're not. You have no idea where this is going, and you're an hour and a half. They're not trying to please anyone. They're yeah. trying to make a cool show. Yeah. yeah, our good story. So I gotta give it a five out of six right now on based on that alone. <laughs> We do the six pack, right? No, it's a universal untapped five out of five. Oh, five, four out of five. Sorry, <laughs> the six was. Sorry, like man, my brain doesn't year, work anymore. Year one, bro. Year one. Uh, I know my brain's not working anymore. He's given the retro score a five out of six. Yeah, just so like the that episodes. Mean, does that mean it's four and a half out of five? Kind of equates to the same percentage. Five. Okay, what about you? That's about four and a half. I, I went four and a half as well, and I would have done four based on the first two episodes, which is a great score. Yeah, but the ex, the third episode, give it the half extra oh, yeah. thing yeah. Uh, boot. I, I think I'm all in. I, I got to tell you, I was sitting here today typing out this and thinking about the show, and I know we don't ever like to look ahead. Sometimes it's hard not to just live in the moment because the show's great, but. Ha- 
as good as it is, it's making me so giddy for Winter Soldier and oh, Falcon yeah, yeah. and Winter oh, yeah. Soldier. I'm like, oh, that's going to be – those two on screen together are going to be great. Yeah. Uh, they were great in uh, when they battled uh, Spider-Man. And, that's uh, what yeah. we, we yeah, said we on this show. Yeah. Uh, that was the best – I mean, the, of a of a movie that's unbelievable, yeah. one of the best moments in the movie. And yeah. just the, even them sitting in the back of the car. It was them two, right? In the yeah. Back yeah. Of the car yeah. When he's, uh, Makes them ride in the back. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then he's almost going to kiss that girl. Sharon Carter. Yeah. Sharon Carter. And he's they're, like their little back and forth commentary is fucking great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, because we just talked about Anthony Mackie and we're going to go ahead and jump to throw it to Missy because I assume we all brought some stuff. But the, I will lead in. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched it yet, but I Outside the Wire. I watched it. Um, it's a good movie. Is it worth I mean, watching? Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. You know, it's not quite level of extra- extraction. It's the mm-hmm. same guy mm-hmm. that did extra- extraction. Um, it, and it's a future movie. It's yeah. kind of it's a it short cool. future. Uh, yeah, and Anthony Mackie's very cool in it. Um, the only – I'm going to give it like a, a, a borderline – three, seven, five out of five. Borderline okay. four. Uh, the, the special effects are – Netflix does a great job of not mm-hmm. going – Marvel level special effects, but very believable, mm-hmm. very cool. Um, the only reason I don't give it a better rating is, and I'm not going to spoil the end for you, um, but they get a little too preachy on what the bad guy and why oh, he's doing okay. it and all that stuff, yeah. and you know how the human race has let itself get out of control and things like that. Yeah. But uh, but still, the the fight scenes with him are very cool. Overall, it's a believable story, so it's fun watching. But outside the wire, Netflix, I give it. A, I'll go ahead and say four out of five. Netflix, I got to tell you what, the, they, I've like I mentioned them last week, but when I was by myself, even the the Korean shows that's in Netflix originals, and I told yeah. you about that Japanese show, Alice in Borderland. Um, they're men. They they just you know everybody's like, well, you know, we're getting oversaturated with streaming platforms. And everybody's coming out with their own stuff. And HBO Max is really going to be – they're the ones that's paying the money. I know Netflix yeah. pays a lot of money, but HBO Max is not doing it themselves. They're yeah. paying you know, for other properties, yeah. um, which we'll get into in a little bit. But uh, um, Netflix just – even when it has a quiet show that goes under the radar, like I just started looping. I, I heard that was good. Is the I dub bother you? What's that? Does the dub bother you? No, it, I tell you this. It only bothers me because I put it on while I was watching, while I was working. Mm-hmm. It only bothers me because I can hear the silliness of it. Mm-hmm. Like, because you know when they dub stuff, they, they just don't quite have the grasp of how slang and stuff in English language yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But when I'm watching it, it doesn't bother me. But letting okay. it go in the background, it was kind of like, oh, it's a little silly. Because yeah. I really want to pull the trigger on it, but I'm like, uh, I've watched, I've only I'd almost the rather read it. And they only have four out, and they leave it on a cliffhanger, but it okay. was good. Yeah, they, I, that, I enjoyed it. It got a really, really strong review from yeah. the critics. So is that a show that is actually like a BBC-style show or some other, it's, and they're slowly picking it up It's a Netflix, Netflix, Netflix original. Is it a Netflix yeah. original? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I didn't know if it was like, but you know how like Peaky Blinders is a BBC show. Yeah, it started, and then they took it over. Yeah, yeah. 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 kind of like Karate Kid. It yeah. started somewhere else, and yeah. they took it over. So. so did you ever watch Project Power? That yeah, I love that. Yeah, that with Jamie Foxx. Yeah. That it, was pretty good. I, I enjoyed that so much I had to go read about read up on that little fucking uh 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 shrimp that his power was based on. That's a real thing. Huh. That little the, pa- inch for you know pa- Jamie Jamie Foxx's yeah, power the, at the end um, of it. Inch for inch, that shrimp is the deadliest animal. It can move its tail literally so fast it creates little sonic booms in the water. It's a mantis shrimp. Yeah. Hmm. It hits so hard that uh it can break glass. Like you can hear th- the yeah, but it's this big, so yeah. you don't see it. No, 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 they're big. They yeah, get but, like, well, I mean, but they can be that small, but they're decent. But it's um, relative to its size; yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's deadly as can yeah. be. Oh yeah, and it, the little bubbles of sonic booms around it. And they're badass. Yeah, them. they can also see in like thirty-seven spectrums of light. Doesn't make any sense. No. A little fucking thing down in the wall. And who makes a movie about it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. I, I enjoyed it. Did okay, you enjoy I it? I haven't seen it yet. I, oh, no. One of those ones that's I, not ruining anything oh, no, for you. Yeah, no, yeah. I knew I knew about it yeah. a little bit. I looked into it, but I, it's I, one of those things I see all the time. I'm like, I just need to pull the trigger and watch if it. If you ever have a day to where, and I do this, I don't mm. know if you guys do this, but when I'm working from home and I do have stuff, I like to sometimes have themes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, sci-fi action theme. Do Project Power and Outside the Wire back to back. That'll be a fun day for you, or Black Lead Actor Day. Right. That yeah. could be. A, and uh, by the way, in Project Power, oh, uh, what's his name's awesome in it. Uh, like Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yeah, he's yeah. awesome in it. He did it, and he hasn't been in anything in a while. But he plays like that, you know, shady kind of dude. Like he, he's a good guy, but also, you know, 
Yeah, he's ver- he's on the edge of, edge uh, of uh, being a bad cop, guy. Cop, yeah. yeah, he and does. The girl in it is pretty good too. Oh yeah, yeah, she is. Um, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, underrated, uh, not underrated, but you know, an underrated movie of his. I think we've talked about it here before. Looper. Oh, That's yeah. another. Yeah. Movie. a great movie. I could watch Looper all the time. Yeah, when it's on. If yeah, it I really on. enjoyed it. Um, go ahead. First thing you brought. Uh, lockdown. I have HBO Max. Uh, I'm getting I don't it because pay for of it. everything. That, yeah, don't you don't pay, pay for, for a lot of. I don't stuff. pay for a lot of stuff. But I, uh, I have it. I don't know who pays for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just clicked on it and it opened up, and I'm like, cool. The Bender uh, slash uh, Old Danny slash Walking yeah, Horse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, on, li- on HBO Max, so uh, movie came out and they shot it in 18 days with Anne Hathaway and uh, I'm gonna butcher the fuck out of his name, Chitwell Ejiofor. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We and so he is for people that don't know, he's the hitman from. Uh, uh, Serenity. Yeah. yeah. He's also uh, Baron Mordo. Yeah. He's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's new bad guy in the yeah. second Doctor yeah, Strange. Yeah. But Spoiler. It's, the movie is set in COVID, like in the lockdown. The the it's set during two weeks in London when London was locked the fuck down, and him and Anne Hathaway are a couple that broke up right before lockdown, and then they're stuck together. Oh, uh, okay. And, like, the first, it's like an hour and 45 minute movie, and the first half of the movie is just, like, trying to survive lockdown with somebody that you don't really want to be around, but you're still in love with. Uh, And then the last half of it turns into a heist film, and the whole thing doesn't seem like it would work, but it works, and it's a lot of fucking fun. He's a great actor. Yeah. Oh, man, he is so good in Uh, this. That's another one I've seen that I'm like... I should pull I'm getting. Yeah. I'm gonna get probably get it this weekend because we have a rare no sports weekend. Um, mm-hmm. Also, by the way, first role he's he was ever in Love Actually, and he was great in Love mm-hmm. Actually as the. I don't think I've ever watched that. All oh, it's right. a, my well, my favorite Christmas. Movie. I know everybody says it's great, and it's I just, the best that's one of those movies I've never pulled the trigger. It's on. the best male chick flick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, he's great in it. Like he quotes poetry through the whole thing. I'm like. Should I read poetry now? And he's got like, a dreamy accent, yeah. so it sells it. Yeah, uh, yeah he's really I, selling it. I, I Annie Hathaway, it. anything Annie Hathaway does. There's, been, there's been a handful of things that just got it right in COVID uh, for uh, – the, the, I can't think of the name of it, but the uh, the gaming or the the video game show on Apple Plus. Oh yeah, Myth Mites and Mystics. Myth or Quest or something. Myth Quest, yeah. yeah, which is a very good should way better than it should be. The final episode of that was all. Is yeah. there only one season of that? Or so two? far, yeah, they're going, they're waiting for COVID to redo the second se- to do the second season. Okay, because the final episode they changed their plan and did a COVID episode. Oh, you said that. I saw very the preview good with episode. the COVID stuff in it, and I was like, they must have had a second season. No, it, yeah, they do. They just literally kind of like that movie. They were just like, we're changing it. We're going to film okay. it all in like a week, and it works. It works really good. And then the Shutter has that uh, scary movie that's uh, all, a COVID scary movie, all done on Zoom, and it's a bunch of people, you know. Staying in touch with you, yeah. they yeah. decide to try to do a uh, Ouija board seance kind of oh, thing on okay. Zoom, and they invoke a ghost, uh, cool. witch, and it works. And it's only, I tell you what, for forty minutes of your time, it's awesome. Oh, you actually watch. watched it? Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh, okay. we have Shutter. We love Shutter because uh, there was that other one. I guess that Michael Bay film, that Songbird or whatever. I'm like, I'm not fucking watching. Yeah, this. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't so watch. I guess it. this is us is doing it too. The masks and everything. Oh, okay. Uh, my girls watch that, so I've seen it. All we watched it. the first There's two a- seasons. There's a yeah. There's an, another uh, that nine one one show I think oh. is also being set because somebody was uh, I was on it was trending on Twitter and it's set during pandemic times yeah. now. We're gonna get that for a year or two. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean I don't want to watch shows like like the Songbird one is about how the government like a uh, uh, at least from the preview it's how. The government used a virus to lock down everybody and take control. Oh of the yeah, whole yeah, world. no, that like, looks, I don't need that conspiracy theory yeah, shit. Yeah, because, here. <laughs> except that doesn't look bad, and it's not told through Zoom and stuff. No, like no, that. no, yeah, it's, it's it's a Michael Bay yeah. film, so I'm sure. I started playing This Is Us at the beginning of the pandemic, and I'm like, this is just hidden too close to home. Yeah, I don't know if I want to play yeah, this yeah. right now. Yeah, it's uh, that's not bad. That wasn't bad. Yeah. Bad show. Oh, that was the that Sterling what, K. Brown from was St. That, Louis, Missouri. Yeah, that Utopia show. I loved I was, it. I loved it too, and they're not doing a second season. Pissed me off, and I told you to watch it because it yeah. gets really good. And, and it was. Who's but, awesome? In it, uh, 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 Dwight Rain, uh, Rain, Rain Wilson. Rain oh, Wilson yeah, 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 yeah. is awesome. In Everybody's it. great in that, yeah. and it was a really good show. And uh, I was pissed that they're not doing a second season. But my wife would come out and be like, "What are you watching?" And she, I'd be watching. She'd watch like five minutes and like, "This is hitting too close to home yeah. right now." Let's turn this <laughs> it's shit very off. much yeah. pandemic. It's a pandemic. Yeah. So, uh, what do you got? First thing you got for them. So we got HBO Max as well, and yeah. I've been 
I hit a bunch of shows right at the beginning, just watch a couple episodes to see what I wanted to watch, and I went with Doom Patrol. Oh, yeah? And it's good. Yeah, I want to pull it to your gun and I haven't yeah. done it. Hey, he walked in and asked if I had Doom Patrol books. Sadly, I don't have Morrison's Run or anything like that. I read one of the more recent ones. The and Gerard but, Way? Yeah, but yeah. It was so much was going on, and they had, like so much oh, backstory. Oh, I love Gerard Way's cared. comics so far, yeah. so I need but to there give was a lot. I feel like you had to know the characters. Yeah, you did. And so I, I was just kind of the yeah. same way. I was like, I don't know if I want to read this now, but yeah. I, I want to go back and read everything because yeah. the first season is amazing. So you watched the whole season? Uh, I watched the whole okay. first season. Second season's out, and I just started it this afternoon. So. so I'm like halfway through the second season of Harley Quinn. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. But then I started Batman the Animated Series with the kids. I did too. And they like it. But they love Batman Beyond, like the future one. Yeah. It's good. Oh, yeah. they're both so fucking good. Like, we've I talked about. How, we've, I mean, I know we've talked yeah. about it. Well, I mean, we've, we've it, talked. Yeah. It's it. the greatest cartoon ever yeah. made, Batman yeah. the Animated But then when you go back and rewatch it, you're like, no, nah, there's not like that nostalgia factor. There's not that. Oh, this isn't as good as ever. It's still. It's, yeah, it's, it's still it great. That's yeah, still awesome. Uh, yeah. I tell you this. Uh, not a part of my throw to Missy topic, but spinning into cartoon. Um, I, I did watch Invincible Day on the anniversary on Friday, Amazon Prime. They announced that the first step, three episodes are March 26th Ooh. on Amazon Prime. And then what they're gonna, Invincible, the cartoon. Oh, it first, okay. All three episodes, our first three episodes are going to drop on the same day, kind of like they did the boys, and then a new episode every Friday. Oh, I mean, nice. Yeah, nice. I'm, man, I'm so excited. It looks so good. I'm gonna get, I'm buying the toys. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, Rachel bought me, uh, speaking of toys, for my birthday, the, uh, my wife got me the original King Kong, like replica of uh, King Kong from back in the day. Oh, yeah. And you can change out the head for a little That's bit awesome. of more of a badass one. Is it a, is it a sideshow collectible? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, it's like, you know, like a you little action figure. No, I didn't know what brand uh, uh, who made it. I forget who it is. Hmm. It's like, starts with the name. It was like 30 bucks. By it's the cool way, though. McFarlane's uh, DC contract now is in full swing. Yeah. And those, I every time I go by Target, I'm like, oh, I can't do it. It, yeah, but they're so fucking good. Yeah, they're so good. Like it, I'm like, oh, McFarland doing DC, doing Batman's all we needed. Yeah. Um, first thing I brought, uh, next another thing I brought up, staying with your Marvel uh, or your HBO Max is it's gonna debut on that first and in theaters. Godzilla vs King Kong trailer come out. Yeah, I'm all on. Uh, it is a little silly when they get up on the aircraft carrier at the same time to fight each other it should collapse it yeah uh, it definitely should but does uh, godzilla look like he shrunk a little by the way he doesn't look quite as big when he's standing in tokyo in there like as he's well yeah yeah it's like we made we made king kong bigger but we also hope no one notices we shrunk down godzilla a little bit i was thinking the same thing today because i watched the trailer like three times now because when he punches king kong in the head and then shoulder checks him i'm like this is fucking great the <laughs> only other <laughs> negative thing i have about the trailer is there's a cool scene where king kong jumps yeah and he's gonna hit him and godzilla shoots his thing out and king kong's blocking it but in the course of the jump, he raises the weapon up, and it's like King Kong's only shooting, or Godzilla's only shooting his weapon. It goes all the way up. No, like, no, no. That is a, it's an, it's attracting. It's an, it's an it's antenna or something. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. like, it's got to be. No. Bullshit. The, the, yeah, the <laughs> argument there is, how the fuck is he going to know that he's a giant monkey? And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead, <laughs> no, know nothing about this, this isn't leaked information, but I'm going to sight unseen spoil the movie for you. Godzilla is being controlled by another entity or another monster, making him be aggressive and kill people. And him and King Kong are going to battle to a virtual standstill before the real villain is displayed. Yeah. And then they're going to join forces and kill the yeah. real oh, villain. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then it's going to be revealed one of their names. The mother's name is Martha. Martha, yeah. I saw, <laughs> I saw that <laughs> meme. But if, if I find out both their moms is Martha, this movie's no, going to fucking... No, Mothra. Mothra. Yeah, Mothra. That's funny. Uh, there was a, a little breakdown online. Somebody said that they could... Pull Mecha God like and they were they were they got to do Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla supposed to be in it somewhere. Yeah, so. that's the one thing Mecha Godzilla and Mecha Kong. I'm just is there a Mecha Kong? There is in in the in Jap Japanese. Japan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's another thing you brought? Uh, if you're looking up, I watched um, I shotgunned all of Ted Lasso. And fucking great! I need to see it. Like, it literally makes you. Feel better. You're a better person for At watching. At the end it. of every episode, you like want to be a better human. It's yeah. hard to describe the feel goodness of this show. Yeah. And like I've said, me and Hal Powell were talking about it. Probably the most negative, per one of the most negative, brutally honest people I know. And he goes, I think I'm nicer for having watched yeah. the season. I said it's the rare show where every person has a, re except for the the old owner. 
the husband. Oh yeah. It's, every character is it has a endearing, redeemable quality, and they live up to it. Yeah. yeah. And even, then like even the assholes turn out to be great people, and yeah. they have a believable reason they're assholes. And yeah, and they have a believable arc back to the side of good, <laughs> and like. And Ted Lasso and Jason Sudeikis, it makes me mad at Olivia Wilde for dating Harry Styles because why would you leave Jason <laughs> yeah. Sudeikis? Which why? I assume every other movie that he's ever done where he plays an asshole is probably there's probably somewhere in the no, middle. No, he's <laughs> acting in those movies. This is the real guy. <laughs> but man, it's like it makes you so happy. And then like even in the low point, like when he's hurt in the show, like. I was tearing up in spots and shit. I'm like, he, God damn it. Spoiler warning, <laughs> when he has a panic attack in yeah, it, you feel I feel it. so bad. I'm like, God damn, why are they doing the Ted Lasso? <laughs> yeah. But man, and, I just... And Coach, no one does more with less lines than Coach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, there was, I shotgunned the whole show. Uh, it, his I name's Coach Beard, it. and he the only reason is because he has a beard. Yeah, oh, nice. you don't even know his real name. Yeah, it's Coach Beard. At all. It's, he's great. You no. might have a new softball nickname. Yeah, I like it. I like it. What else you oh, got? Man, that's great. Um, so two other shows I started and I haven't finished was Titans. How was that? I heard it was good. What is it? Titans Teen on Titans. HBO Max. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. yeah I, I, I wasn't in back and I was off past it's, that. So it's yeah. different. Okay. Very different. Very dark. Adult, yeah, very right? dark. Yeah. Yeah. Adultish. Well, yeah, because almost right off the bat, Robin's like. Fuck, Fuck Batman. Batman. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, that was the big clip. Yeah. And Starfire's like... Sexy as fuck. sexified. Or yeah. Her, but she was uh, for a while. In, the in new comic books, she's the sexist. Yeah. 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 Well, for a while in the news, she was when she was first written. You know, See, I never yeah. read any of that. And then when Slept they with the new 52, I, I tried to pick it up a little bit. I just didn't care for it. Yeah. yeah. but it, That's smart. Yeah. I heard it picks up in season two, so okay. I'm, I'm going to stick with it. But it's it. done, though, right? Or are they doing it on? I think they're still going. What what other show? Um, and then uh, Love Care Country. Uh, oh, I, yeah, that's on HBO that's... One. Now. Are you all the way through it, or were you? No, at? I'm three episodes in. It's uh, that's one of those like slow burns, and every episode you're like, should I keep watching this? Yeah, it's good, but fucking weird. So <laughs> I heard about the uh, was it the Sundown Counties? Yeah, Sundown Towns. Yeah, in in the first episode, and that was nerve wracking. Like. Watching them drive the speed limit, oh, yeah. cop behind them to yeah. get to the county line. Oh, the and black people thing. and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And that, you watched The Watchmen, right? There oh, used yeah. to be. I don't know if they're alluding to it, but there was a there was a back during those days of segregation and whatnot. Black people literally had a map they could buy. That yeah, that's the whole. Is that what it's about? Is, oh, is like okay. his yeah. uncle uh, is the writer of the Negro's Guide to what's it called? I don't remember now. It's some, it basically it's a stupid white it's a people. guide yeah. book. Yeah, it's a guidebook for safe passage through towns, and it's like the first or second episode where they go to that restaurant. Yeah, and uh, Julie, so uh, it's not Julie. Jesse is. Jesse's her brother. Okay, uh, I don't know. You're small I don't know the girl in it. Oh, she, like, Jesse, go, Jesse, Jesse, small Jesse, yeah, yeah. His name's dumber than he is. Yeah. No, but which his is sister, hard to do. His sister. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She's a spectacular she, yeah. actress. Yeah, and um, yeah, she's been doing good for a while. Yeah, yeah. but they go into this restaurant and uh, they're like, "Oh, it says it's a good restaurant." And everybody's like real nervous, and the floorboards are all like everything looks real clean. They're like, "I don't know, man. Something feels weird." And she goes to go to the bathroom, and she sees like the the yeah. waiter in the back calling, and she runs forward, like get the fuck out of here, oh, <laughs> like yeah. take off. Uh, yeah, I need to watch. I'm gonna get HBO Max this week. Oh, I just talked it, myself yeah. into it. Uh, I've got two things to go real quick. I'm gonna. Uh, I mean, we got a lot. We we're we're we're, um, we're almost an hour, but there's nothing that says we have to adhere to an hour. Uh, we you talked about Alan Tudyk earlier. Yes, he's got a new show coming on Sci Fi called Alien. I want to watch. Yeah, right. he's like Resident a, Alien. Resident Alien. Yeah, I hear the, and, yeah, I hear the preview on every podcast. I and see. he, yeah. but it's because it's him. And I dig the premise because he's like a, a detective, small town doctor, small town yeah. doctor. Did that, you even watch the no no the trailer? He's <laughs> a small town doctor that. Yeah, Bax his way into being yeah, a forensic yeah, yeah. doctor, yeah. yeah, and he's an alien, and you know, and it's him who's yeah. it's Wash acting crazy, or or what's his uh, android name uh, from Star Wars? Oh, K two S O. K two S O. Yeah, yeah. Which so is my favorite Star Wars character. I think. So he's also the bad guy in season one of Do- uh, Doom Patrol. Oh, is he really? Yeah. And he bra- nice. he told me he explains that he breaks the fourth wall. Con- he wears like DC material. Oh, that's the next thing I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the other thing that I wanted to bring up TV shows before I go into some other things is. Uh, uh, Mandalorian season three was announced today. It starts filming April. in April. Yeah. yeah, that's way earlier than we we didn't expect. So when they announced all that stuff, 
They didn't say when Mandalorian was coming mm-hmm. back. They they originally said end of December, yeah. and then it got pushed back after they announced the book. Everything effect, else, but yeah. now it's it starts in April. I'm yeah. super excited. Yeah. yeah, that's exciting. I I was like, are you which, serious? Which means we're going to get it in in fall or, or winter probably next year. I think or it's this gonna, year. I think it's going to be next year. Oh, okay, well that's going to make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that's still makes sense. Book of Boba Fett's supposed to be four episodes. I think it's going to come limited out right series. After that. Yeah. 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 All right. What do you got? Uh Nothing new. I don't. Uh, if you don't have anything else, it. it's all right. I've got two more things I'm going to talk about, and that's it. Nothing new. I was just going to ask if your guys' kids, uh, my daughter's a little younger. Anything that I get now from her is 100% Mandalorian. Like, it's. No, I it's got. all baby. Yoda. I got chest. I love it. No. It's adorable. But I'm like, it was my birthday was just last weekend, and. My wife was like, "You almost got a full size like Yoda onesie from Target." From I get, well, like, Yoda sits in the studio <laughs> watching us. Uh, no, and I got like Baby Yoda everything I, all over the house. I got I chastised a couple days ago for not wearing my Yoda sock. I got like a like yeah. a four or five pack of uh, okay. So they don't grow out of it. That was my question. That was no, my, they don't. No. <laughs> and and also, it's sitting in here too. I got one of those Lego sets. That's the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. It's like the blockier style, uh-huh. and I've yet to put together. And the the same person chastised me for both and that would have been my wife because she knows how much i love the show she goes i can't believe you and she even yelled at me because baby yoda had a little bit of dog hair on one eye and she goes i can't believe you're letting grogu sit dirty <laughs> yeah. i'm like it's my fault it's my fault uh yeah, my kids give me all kinds of stuff like that like that's awesome i get a lot of t-shirts it's turned okay. a corner for me mm-hmm. like i've been my wife and kids have or my wife in particular has not leaned into my nerd culture, it and my all, ye- all my whole life that we've been together, whole life we've been together for the last, the last twelve years. She's it's been a struggle to get her to buy the things I want her to buy, and then out of nowhere, she just started doing it. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, oh, so Rachel okay. won't buy me comic books. Like she refuses to buy me comic books if I ask <laughs> for them, but she will like go to that pottery painting thing with the kids. Yeah, and like paint me a mug, and she'll and she's pretty good at like. That powder shit, like custom painted Yoda on there. Or, well, she's she's kind of a Karen, and that's a yeah. Karen thing to do. <laughs> like she and you know different stuff like that. Or she'll buy me a fucking King Kong out of nowhere. Yeah, that's cool. You that's know. a nerd thing. Yeah, yeah. So but she won't buy me comics. My family's totally different because everyone has to be there to watch Mandalorian or yeah. WandaVision. Yeah. We go opening night to Marvel movies. Yeah. My kids are all in. Just rub it in a little bit, Jay. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, way yeah. to go. You have a My wife likes me comic family. books yeah, every cool once in a while. Cool family. We yeah. got a bunch of assholes in our household. But <laughs> My wife right. likes the movies, but she doesn't like going to the theater. Tying yeah. it back to your pottery story. So I have had this mug for the last five years that, that Kaylin made for me one time. Big blue coffee mug. Nothing fancy. Just mm-hmm. blue watercolor style looking. Mm-hmm. It says, I love dad and a heart. Uh, Missy accidentally broke it yesterday. Uh, kind of, uh, kind of upset me. Yeah, I use that coffee mug. It sat on my desk at my when I had a desk mm-hmm. in an office. My last two jobs. Now that I work, for, you know, I'm, I'm on the road or work from home. I, it's been here. I, it was more protected in the boys' club of the jobs I used to have than it was here with my wife. Yeah. So was it? Accidental or was it on a jealous? Well, what happened is we've got that little hanging thing, yeah. and she dropped the top mug into oh, it, and it yeah. broke it. And I, she goes, "I got bad news for you." And she told me, "I go, I gotta tell you, it upsets me a little bit." Yeah. Cheered up. Uh, yeah. You got anything else before I jump into what last two things I got? R.I.P. Hank Aaron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, well, that was that, a tough one. That'll spin into the one topic I have. Yeah, uh, I tell you this, I do like. If they're going to do it, which you're drinking too slow. At Atlanta, I'll, I'll take one. I can finish this. Atlanta is not going to change its name. Mm-hmm. But if they did, the Atlanta Hammers is a pretty fucking awesome I, name. I would love that. That is an awesome name. Uh, you know, he didn't like the name Hank. Really? He, li- he did not like going by Hank. He was Henry. Hmm. He wanted to be no. Henry. Um, but, you know, to segue off of that, that was a sad day because he is, and I've been guilty of this too, that fucker played like 26 years. Yeah, he did. He, so he, but his level of consistency for 26 years is impressive. Yeah. Uh, but, and a, and a surefire Hall of Famer, and he should have been. But speaking of not surefire Hall of Famers, uh, since 2013 is the last time this happened, no Hall of Fame player, no players inducted in the Hall I saw, of Fame. I saw that come up, and is it because of the COVID thing? No, no, they no. They, they didn't get enough votes. They nobody voted. Got, nobody got you 75% need, You need 75% of the, of the votes to get in the Hall of Fame. I have no idea. Uh, uh, the closest was Kurt Schilling, 
at seventy one percent. But he's a douchebag. So he's a he giant douchebag. Yeah, and then you've got uh, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens both around that sixty ish mark. Mm-hmm. And uh, next year's their last year on the ballots. And then they go to the you veterans. Only get so much time. Ten years, and then you have to wait. And then you pop up on the Veterans Committee. Yeah, and it's not even every year with the Veterans yeah, it's Committee. Not. It's by era that you play. Yeah, so it's getting the window's getting smaller. And now Bonds and Clemens have gained votes over the years yeah. and McGuire, but they did not gain a significant amount this year. No, and I think they'll get in with the Veterans Committee. I don't think the writers will ever put them in. Yeah, I think so, too. I think the veterans are going to get them in. So um, did you hear about the Omar Vizquel stuff? No, what about it? Well, about a month ago, it broke that he was accused of beating his wife, and some writers had already turned in their ballots and asked the Hall of Fame for their ballots back to take them off. Oh. But the Hall of Fame wouldn't do it because they don't want to set a precedent. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, Ty Cobb was not a good person. No. <laughs> um, the Georgia Peach was a bit of a Georgia racist yeah. and uh, pissed, killed a man in yeah. an alley with a pistol. Yeah. Pistol yeah. whipped him to death. He uh, punched a fan. Punched a fan. That was a time period where fans also could pick chairs up and throw them into the, the field, though. Fans had it coming. Yeah. Fans have it coming in this day and age. Yeah. Um, uh, Omar Vizquel, though, uh, I don't want to see anything bad, in a, and it sucks if he did that to people, but I'll say this. Um, my neighbor, Barry, who's a teacher and a big-time fan of stats and stuff, mm-hmm. really good at uh, historical facts with baseball. Uh, he goes, you know, Ozzie Smith is, is is arguably the greatest shortstop, greatest defensive player of all time. He goes, yeah. but if you look at the numbers, Omar Vizquel was better. So I was like, no, you're lying. And I looked it up. I'll be damned if Omar Vizquel was actually a better fielder than Ozzie Smith, statistically. Yeah. And by your advanced saber metrics, he absolutely was. Yeah, but if you look at stuff like War, he's way behind Ozzie uh, I I was looking at Jaws, which is a but you can't go by WAR because of the for the defensive side of it. It, it incorporates it, but, but it's it not as heavy heavily. on on base percentage, yeah. OPS, and things like that. Which Ozzy's never going to win an award on that stuff. Yeah, if you look at Jaws, which is like the peak performance of them. Yeah, Ozzy Smith was like ninth all time, yeah. and Omar Vizquel was forty eighth for shortstops, which shows you the flaw in the way that these things are all done. Yeah. Uh, because by the normal metrics, like putouts, fielding yeah. percentage, and stuff, Visco was better. Yeah. But you have to invent ways to grade everybody all yeah. the time. Uh, the last thing I got, I'll bring up. I want to give a shout out to my buddy AC, who has done a bang up job of starting to brand and market himself of late. Um, from Harold Earth that's coming out, which I did the logo for. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll show you guys. I do. The, I'm not going to show it on air, but I also did the cover for the second book, the second ebook he's releasing. And then I kind of did a design, and I don't know if he's going to use it, but at least it gave me some ideas for the omnibus because he's what he's doing is these Harold Earth books, and they're mit- they were originally intended to be comic books. So what he's doing his little novellas, like 75 to 100 pages of each story, and then after all 12 of them are released, he's or 10 or 12, he's going to do an omnibus and actually print that for his oh, next cool. book. Nice. Um, so I'll show you some of the cover designs I did for that and stuff. But he also has started he started doing little teasers on TikTok, mm-hmm. tried to get his brand out. And then That's this cool. this past week he debuted his new YouTube series show called Drinking Around or Drinks Around the Table. And it's while he's drawing and he's just having whiskey and he talks. The first one was his best friend and, and former uh, two time guest on the show, Daniel Moeller, who writes mm-hmm. Psychonauts Presents. Yeah. Uh, but to his credit, He's enjoyed it enough. He enjoyed that first episode enough, and he did. They're thirty minutes long. He actually they did two hours, so he's editing it and he's cutting in pictures and stuff like That's that. That's awesome. Yeah, he's doing a good job with it. But he's actually he wants me on it, but it's Friday nights, which I you know yeah. trying to get us trivia. It's Friday nights not good for me. Yeah, it's volleyball for me and Missy or yeah. soccer or something. But uh, he wants on it. But he actually has the next handful of weeks booked with different guests to come on and draw and do it. And they're doing it via Zoom. Yeah, it'll be fun one day when they can get together and just put a camera on everybody and do oh, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, so shout out to him, and I'll, I think he's going to use it. I also just did the logo for that. Mm-hmm. He didn't have one in the first one, so big. That's uh, drinks around the table. I think you can find it on Aaron Conaway on YouTube. So big shout out to him. But I don't have anything else. I tried to. Uh Buy the Butcher Queen uh, trade, and it's sold out everywhere. Yeah, so the, awesome. the reviews are really good for it. I've mm. now that the fourth issue's in, I, mm. I'm going to read the new one. I've been waiting, but I've looked them all over. the uh, The art's great in them. 
Yeah, and, and I, I looked Ben's all Ben's gotten better every fucking issue. Yeah, and I've looked all over, like, local comic book shops and everything, and so far everybody's sold out, so good for them. Speaking yeah. of local comic shops, you know the one down at the Loop? Have you ever seen it? Yeah. Apotheos? No, no Apotheos. No, no, is, yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, it's not Star Clipper. Yeah, anymore, it used right? to be Star Clipper. And then it went to some... another one, yeah. and it's closed. Oh. I was, we were down at the Loop this past uh, Martin Luther King Day, MLK Day. We mm. the girls were off, so I took off. We went down and ate at Blueberry Hill. I've never eaten there. We went to Vintage Vinyl, um, got, got some records me and Kaylin did, and uh, I was like, oh, let's go to the comic shop. Not there anymore. Oh, I have man. to thank COVID and, and the fact yeah. that Star Clipper couldn't survive there after the rising cost of rent and yeah. stuff. So maybe that was it. But I don't have anything else. Do you guys have anything else? No, I'm, I'm good. you have no slogan, but you are a catchphrase. But you are sitting in the uh, the Badger seat. So go ahead and tell everybody bye. Bye. And then uh, hold on to your butt. And I'm playing the music. So that's it. Right out of